Okay, so we've covered the virtual keyboard and fretboard. The QWERTY keyboard entry mentioned previously, there's a variation on that which we actually call alphabetic step time input uh, while we're still on the subject of step entry. This allows you to enter notes using the letters A through to G on the QWERTY keyboard to indicate the pitches A through to G. Uh, so this is different to the, the QWERTY option we talked about in the virtual keyboard. This is uh, the actual uh, letter to uh, note name is the relationship that they're going to have. So if I, for instance, select this uh, quaver here and just change these notes by going A, B through to G. All right, so it's giving me the, the pictures as I tap through them on my keyboard uh, in the closest octave range to the last note that was selected and just keeping it diatonic with the scale. Um, so this can be a really uh, fast way to get notes in while you're on the go and doing other things and not wanting to, to have to grab the mouse or some other note input method all the time. And uh, you've got special uh, shortcuts as well that will allow you to add chord notes above and below uh, using shift and the same pitch names or the QWERTY numbers, I'll just delete those two, the QWERTY keyboard numbers, so the number row on top of your QWERTY keyboard, you can add intervals that way. Alright, and holding down shift with those will add them below. And the interval obviously being the same as the number that you select. So if I select uh, shift and five, it'll give me a fifth below. All right. And of course, what's widely regarded as the fastest uh, form of note entry, uh, save live recording by a very skillful keyboard player, um, is to use a MIDI keyboard with step entry. So I've got a MIDI keyboard connected. And if I was using a MIDI keyboard in conjunction with using the numeric keypad to select my rhythm values, once you get fast at uh, entering notation this way and get used to where your various note values are mapped on the keypad, when it comes to the data entry side of Sibelius, this is uh, generally a, a really fast way that, that most people end up preferring to work. If they've got even uh, mediocre keyboard skills, it can still be really effective. So if I just delete these, Give a little example just so you get the idea. Just checking I'm in the right octave range, which I'm not. I think that will give me the right one. So once you know where you're starting from, we just want our quaver, then a dot, F, G, and then take away the dot, put the A in, uh, dotted crotchet on the G again, and then back to our quaver. Oh, in this case we put the uh, the silly tie in there that we didn't really want to see but that's okay and then down to a half note for the E and then dotted crotchet again for another E. Alright so I just did a little trick there with my uh, arrows on the uh, QWERTY keyboard uh, just to go back and, and add the tie to the note where I forgot to add that one. So the big advantage of course uh, as you're going through with uh, a keyboard um, as opposed to the on-screen keyboard is that we can get chords in in one hit as well. And all our accidentals and all that sort of stuff as well of course. Etc. can do all kinds of crazy things. And all it takes is um, yeah, just to quickly play that value on the keyboard, all those keys on the keyboard, and the notation just appears instantly when you're in step entry mode that way. So if you get used to working that way, it can be really fast. But to move on from step entry and have a quick look at live recording, just a couple of uh, pictures of the, the options that we've been talking about there. Another little look at the, the timeline, saving me from the, the score jumping around in this uh, weird layout environment at the moment. So FlexiTime live MIDI recording is where we play directly into Sibelius uh, using a MIDI keyboard uh, and play along to a metronome. So I might just start a new score because that's a bit of a, an unusual example there. And I'll just bring up a piano score quickly and I might change our layout to four bars. Uh, four bars a line just to make it look a bit neat. And what we'll find for our FlexiTime input is in the Note Input tab, we have a section here called FlexiTime, 
and this is basically the term that's used in Sibelius for live recording. So any, any record function that you click on, whether it's record here specifically in the flexi time area or record in the transport area of the play tab or on the, the playback transport itself, uh, it all goes to the same thing. So it all means flexi time recording. And what you want to do though is give Sibelius a bit of information about what you're going to record first of all so that it can filter uh, correctly and not uh, try and interpret too much uh, strange information. That's not necessarily stuff that should be notated. So the first thing I do, because I've got uh, very poor keyboard skills, is click on non rubato. So I don't want Sibelius to try and speed up and slow down with me as I adjust the tempo gradually and carefully. Um, I would save that that particular feature for very confident keyboard players. And I'll keep this on replace for the moment. I usually turn this off and choose uh, whether I'm gonna record uh, into voice one or two. Uh, and I can click on overdub uh, in cases where I need to and then record voice one first and then voice two second. Uh, I find that's often uh, more effective than, uh, than trying to get it to split automatically although sometimes it can do a good job with that as well so we have a metronome click that's nice and then the adjust rhythms this is a very important area uh, where we'll choose to adjust the uh, the rhythmic value uh, being the shortest possible note value that Sibelius can represent from uh, what it notates from my uh, live input so in this case uh, if we choose a 16th note and we'll just leave these default options as they are. And I'll change these to none because I know I'm not going to play any uh, tuplets in this example that I record in. So if I just have a little practice run, this is the, the little piece I'm going to attempt to record. I'll try and do it with both hands. leave the trill out of it because trills are easy to add with a line and it will confuse the playback engine if I've uh, restricted Sibelius to a 16th note and then try and play a, a 30 second note trill or something like that will uh, make things a bit upset. So let's see if I can do that roughly at tempo and I'm going to use the shortcut Control shift f for flexi time recording uh, which is shown there when I hover over it in the ribbon and it just keeps your, your hands close to the keyboard. Not too bad from uh, from what I can see. Looks like I'm an octave down, possibly from uh, from where that's actually supposed to be played in the melody. Yeah, so not too bad a result. There's a bit of control data. I think my modulation wheel was uh, bumped on there. Uh, if you see any of that info come through, it's a good opportunity to show the filter in action. If I just double click on that stave. We see those hidden MIDI messages selected along with everything else. Uh, if I come into the, the Home tab and Filters area, filter out staff text, just hit Delete and that gets rid of them. You'll find different MIDI keyboards might leave some of that data on the score by default. And there are ways to, uh, to turn this stuff off usually, but uh, um, Aftertouch is something that some of them might leave a big stream of. Uh, it'll be in hidden text, but uh, if you've got your, your hidden objects showing in the View tab, as I do here from the invisibles area, uh, it will actually uh, show them in the score so you'll be aware of when they've occurred. Uh, so you can see I've had a, maybe I'll tap to note a bit too gently there. So there's a bit of funny information going on there, but it's done not a bad job of, uh, of interpreting exactly what I've played. Um, so that one there, I would just delete that. And then this. All right, so I need to kind of duplicate that one to where it needs to be. And then maybe this one here, I would just cut that note there, turn that one into a quaver, and then just paste the one I cut back in there. So we're now getting what looks like the correct notation. Uh, so that one needs a trill, as we all know, from this famous Mozart piece. And 
we've got a pretty good result there from a short period of input. Um, so if I just go to the, the play tab as well, you might have noticed when we played this back uh, just then, I'll just do it again. Just have a listen to it and have a listen for the quirks of my uh, live input. So the timing's a bit, a little bit funny here and there uh, and the dynamics uh, might not be particularly consistent, but just get a feel for that when I play it back again. So what you're getting there is uh, what's called live playback data. So if I come into the Home tab and click on the Inspector uh, over here in the, the Edit area, click on this Inspector button, and I'll pin the Inspector with this option here on the, on the top left, and that will just keep it showing while I click through other things in the score and stop it from disappearing. Um, but when I select these notes that I've recorded with FlexiTime input, uh, what we'll see here is a live velocity start position and duration value occurs for every note uh, that's been selected in, in the score. So as I cycle through them, you'll see this info changes. All right, so those values are showing that I'm certainly not quite on the beat with every note. Uh, I'm not, not particularly when it comes to the duration, I'm not particularly consistent with holding the, the correct value of a crotchet at 100 beats a minute. I think 100 beats a minute is the, yep, the current tempo. And you can hear when we played it back before that my dynamics uh, weren't particularly consistent either. And this is represented by the, the live velocity value. So you can see I'm a little bit all over the place. Not too bad, but uh, could be better. So what we can do, um, and when you're using this feature, I tend to, to recommend it, unless you've got a specific reason not to, is I'll turn off live tempo and turn off live playback. Um, so we've turned the, the flexibility of temp tempo to off anyway. But if we turn off live playback and live tempo, it will ensure that Sibelius locks the tempo to 100 beats a minute or whatever your current tempo setting is. And turning off live playback will now ensure that when I select these notes, none of that live playback information is interpreted. And Sibelius will now dictate from the notation written on screen exactly how it's supposed to be played. So if you have a listen back to this now, what you're going to hear is very tight uh, performance from Sibelius and very consistent dynamics throughout. Okay, so that's the, uh, the essence of live playback. And when you're dealing with flexi time to get your own stuff down, particularly when you're transcribing and wanting to work out the correct notation for the rhythm that's in your head or, or that you're trying to work out from a recording or something like that, you definitely want to have live playback switched off so that when you play your examples back, you're hearing what the notation should actually sound like, not what you played in with the notation as a rough representation of that, so to speak. So just going back to my presentation score. Um, one of the things I like to do with, and I just jump to that next page, do with flexi time is uh, set transcription exercises with it for students that are learning composition for the first time or, uh, or are very new to the idea of transcribing their own material into Western notation. So I generally uh, will set them some, some soft examples, uh, like the old Chariots of Fire uh, melody that we uh, uh, heard earlier. And what I do is notate those in one stave, have a separate stave uh, for students to use to actually notate their own interpretation of what they hear. And I'll select the notation in the stave and hide it, which is what I've done here, where it comes up in light grey as opposed to that, that bold blue. From the Home tab, Edit and Hide or Show area, you can do this by choosing the Hide or Show option. So there's a shortcut for that as well to make it nice and fast. Control shift h And when that notation is hidden, Sibelius will treat it like an empty stave for the purpose of uh, hiding staves in the score. So I can now take that stave with hidden notation 
and go to Layout tab, Hiding Staves, so it's starting at the Layout tab in the middle, Hiding Staves, Hide Empty Staves. And what we're left with, um, if you present this score to the student like this, is a, you give them a piece of text that they can select to start playback from. And usually we'd have your metronome on, of course. I'll just take the mute off that for the moment. All right, and then they can attempt to notate that on this separate staff that doesn't have the, the notation in it. If they're clever, they might work out that they can show the empty stave and cheek, but hopefully not. It's never happened to me yet. So I just always think it's worth mentioning that uh, as an exercise for, uh, for students to, to get their head around, particularly the rhythmic aspects of Western notation, because it can be uh, quite tricky at first, as we all know, uh, to really start thinking in terms of, of what the notation you're hearing should actually look like on paper.